Well, let's begin tonight with that dramatic scene that unfolded just hours ago south of here at Seattle's airport. Five minutes into the flight, the pilot and some passengers heard banging coming from the cargo hold. Mi Young Lee is here with a dramatic story that Mi Young ends nicely. It does. So this is Alaska Airlines flight 448. It was on its route to Los Angeles. About 2.39 p.m. it took off. And here's a, a grab screen grab from the Flight Aware website. They track flights. So it left uh, Seattle Tacoma Airport and you can see how quickly it made that turn to get back around. According to Alaska Airlines, immediately after takeoff during the descent and acceleration, there was the banging. They heard the banging uh, and that's when the pilot immediately radioed in to say they needed a priority emergency landing to get back to Seattle. Alaska Airlines says this entire flight was about 14 minutes into the air. Now, passenger who was interviewed by one of the local stations says that he was in first class, that he heard, I'm just going to refer to these pictures quickly, that's the baggage handler, the ramp agent. You can see that he's walked out of the hold. He's himself walking to the ambulance. Now, a passenger in first class said that he, as well as the other passengers, also heard that banging almost immediately after the descent in the plateau, uh, and that there were two air marshals on the flight who immediately jumped up, spoke to the flight attendant, and they all went and spoke to the pilot. And that's when he says the pilot came on the air airwaves to say that they were turning back and heading to Seattle, and that those air marshals actually stood on their hands and knees, got on the floor and started banging on the bottom of that airplane to ensure that ramp agent knew that they were turning back and that yelling and banging happened for that entire flight. Now, uh, Alaska Airlines says that uh, he told them that in fact he had fallen asleep in that cargo hold in and that uh, he was alerted to it I guess when the engine started to uh, rev up as the plane was about to take off. Everything about this story is so incredible when we started getting reports in here as people you know saw it on their computer they all started saying to other people did you hear about this what's Alaska Airlines saying about well, this? Well you know they say first of all that it's kind of a good thing that he fell asleep in the front cargo hold mm -hmm. because the front cargo hold is where we keep the animals. The pets are stored, but 12 meters to 9 meters and it's temperature controlled. So uh, not a long flight, but definitely he wasn't uncomfortable, they say in that term, but still unsafe. There's no seats or seat belts. Alaska Airlines say this has never happened to them before as long as, as far as they can hear. Uh, the, they say, the, as you saw, the ramp agent walked off and he says they've taken him to hospital as a precaution. Uh, in a press briefing, they were asked any repercussions for this ramp agent. Uh, the Alaskan Airlines rep wouldn't comment on it just to say that their investigation continues, but uh, that they're going to be talking not only to that agent, but all of the crews that were on scene that day. All right, Mi Young, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, as we often do with aviation stories, let's check in now with uh, pilot Marc Antoine Plourde, who is in Montreal. Marc Antoine, first of all, when you you get ready to push back when you're at the controls of a commercial aircraft. How do you know that the hold doesn't have any people in it? Well, you have to trust that the that the lead uh, ground crew, we call him or her the lead, uh, is responsible for, for his and, or her team and that they've done a body count and, and, and that they ensured no one is in the cargo bay. I mean, I've never heard of such a story, and so it tells you that it's not something that's very common in, in the world of aviation with hundreds of thousands of flights taking off and landing safely without anybody in the cargo. So many times we've spoken to you, Marc Antoine, about various things that have happened in aviation, and time and time again you've told us, I've dealt with that before, or certainly I've trained for that before. In this case, this is not something that you're going to simulate uh, during your training, so put yourself in, in, in sort of the mind of that pilot, five minutes out of SeaTac Airport, on his way to Los Angeles Airport, he hears this banging, and then all of a sudden he's got to make some, some split-second decisions. Well, first, uh, first you look at your uh, colleague and you say, did you hear what I'm hearing? There's banging. And then I would talk to the flight attendants and say, you know, are you banging or who's banging? And, and to find out that it's coming from underneath, I would be completely shocked. Uh, I mean, flabbergasted. Uh, it's not something you hear. It's not something that's common. In fact, I've never heard the story in 25 years of flying. So, um, but the next step is okay. Well, there's obviously somebody there, and and though we know it's pressurized and and heated for the 737, which is just the cargo bay, the front cargo bay is right underneath first class, actually behind the flight deck. Then the next step is okay. We got to go back and land. We're not going to continue on to our destination. One other thing I'm wondering about, this is a relatively short flight, a couple of hours from Seattle to Los Angeles, but 
this plane is fueled for that flight. What are the challenges or are there particular challenges in very quickly? We understand, as I say, five to seven minutes into this flight, 14 minutes in total in the air. Does that present particular challenges for the pilot in terms of turning around and landing safely? Well, Ian, unlike the big aircraft that can fly for 10, 15 hours, which have so much fuel on board, with which have the ability to jettison fuel, this does not require that. Uh, we can we can land a Boeing 737, Airbus 320, same size, uh, and we, we call it an overweight landing. So it's just to be very cautious to follow a checklist that reminds us of several factors that we have to take into consideration. Uh, you know, the, the flap setting that we use, the speeds we're going to use, and the, just the normal profile that we're going to fly and this aircraft onto. And so we, it's meticulous work, but it's something that we can do. We're trained for, and, and that's, that's exactly what they did. And it was an un, uneventful landing. It's just we have to be more cautious because we're a lot heavier than what we're used to. Well, it uh, all ended nicely, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> other than we don't know what uh, this guy's bosses are going to say to him, but he seems yeah. to be safe and sound. The landing was safe and sound, so it all worked out. Marc-Antoine Pleurit, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, sir.